this is the book that made me fall in love with the Lamborghini Espada. I got this book when I was about 10 years old, and this is the picture that made me fall in love with that car. I don't know why this book is full of wild, exotic cars, but this is the one that got me. And when I was 10, I never thought I would have one. My name is Aaron Robinson. I'm a technical editor with Car and Driver Magazine, and I drive a Lamborghini Espada. My car is a 1970 Series 2. They made three series. Mine's the middle one. Uh, it's actually the 263rd Espada ever built out of 1,217 cars total. Uh, this is the second Lamborghini Espada that I've owned. I had one for about 10 years. I restored it out of boxes, bought it in Reading, Pennsylvania. I spent seven years putting that car on the road, uh, sold it, missed it <laughs> about six years later, and uh, went in search of another one, and I found this one. So I'm the third owner of this particular car, which is very unusual for an Espada because they tend to kind of go from owner to owner, bleeding them white until they're sold and then, you know, eventually they end up in the junkyard. But not this one. It's the most well-preserved and original Espada I have ever seen. It's in the original paint, original interior leather. When I first saw the car, I looked to see if the spare tire was there because it's an extra spare wheel and sometimes people sell them and the spare tire had never been out of the car, I'm convinced. It still has grease pencil writing from the factory. This car has everything. It, it was very exciting. It's really kind of a time capsule almost. Ferruccio Lamborghini was born in a farming village in northern Italy and he started a business where he was kind of pasting together farm machinery out of whatever equipment he could find laying around and eventually that evolved into producing tractors of his own design. By 1960 or so he had you know Ferraris and Maseratis and he liked fast cars. He always had problems with his Ferraris. He thought he could build a better car and he could service the customers better and he could make more money. So he opened Automobili Lamborghini in 1963. I've seen a lot of Espadas and typically what happens is they break a lot and the things that you fix don't stay fixed for very long. And so they tend to go through a lot of different mechanics. The mechanics change stuff. They modify stuff. The cars get repainted. They tend to rust. So of course they need bodywork. Uh, they get in accidents. So they, they just tend to sort of shed parts over the years. And this particular car has everything. I've always been attracted to weird esoteric cars for some reason. I like what nobody else likes. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. I mean, I just like strange cars. And the Espada definitely fits. I mean, they didn't build that many. It's not the Lamborghini everybody thinks of when they think of Lamborghini. People ask me all the time, do the doors go up vertically? No, the doors don't go up vertically. That came later. So it's just a strange car. I've actually pulled up to the fuel pumps and had it. somebody ask me if it was a Ford Torino. So, you know, it's kind of all the trouble and expense of owning a Ferrari or a Maserati or cars that are much better known, but nobody knows what it is. And that appeals to me, although most guys that, doesn't, that wouldn't appeal to them. So it's just kind of a, one of these oddballs that's produced by the industry. I like the backstory of the car. The company was very young when it produced it. The people who engineered it were all in their 20s. It was really an audacious, uh, bold car. It's quite complicated. So for a young, new company, it was quite an ambitious undertaking. And I just think it's beautiful. I mean, Marcello Gandini drew the body and he's the same guy that designed the Miura. His eye and my eye see the world the same. It's just fabulous. This is what you spend all the money for. I did a full restoration on an Espada and it knocked probably 10 years off my life. So I'm never doing another one of those again. Uh, this is kind of a rolling restoration, just kind of fix and repair and, you know, tend to the things that have gotten old after so many years. The fact is, is in the collector car world, originality is really hot right now. I mean, the cars that get the most attention at the car shows are the cars that are in original condition, even if the paint is peeling and the leather's cracked and everything. People want to see the way the cars were when they were built at the factory. A car is only original once. Uh, and once you repaint it, that's gone, that's lost. And so uh, original cars are really getting the most money right now and they're getting the most attention. And that's really kind of the coin of the realm in the collector car world at the moment.
You definitely have the sense that you're in an old car, old technology, uh, fairly heavy car. It's about 3,600 pounds, so the steering can load up a little bit, but the wheel is quite large, so when you're moving, and especially at about 100 miles an hour, the steering is just perfect. And at about 100 miles an hour, the car completely comes into its own. You know, the suspension becomes really creamy, and car tracks dead straight. When you go over 100 miles an hour, that's when the aerodynamics come into play. The windshield wipers start lifting off the glass. The front end becomes a little bit light. So 100 to 120 is about its uh, happy, happy zone. <laughs> For one thing, it doesn't have one fuel tank. It's got two. There's two 12 and a half gallon tanks on either side in the back. And they're not in parallel, they're in series. So one tank feeds to the next tank and with a little tiny line. So if you fuel one tank, you can really only ever get more about a half of a tank of fuel in the car. You can only get about half of a fill up or you have to stand there and wait 20 minutes for the two tanks to equalize. Or if possible, you drag the hose across the car and try and fill up the other tank. But with today's vapor recovery nozzles, it's just really hard to do it because the car is so wide and the hoses are short. So I rarely ever have more than half a tank of fuel in the car. Um, and that's just one of the little fun quirks. It's a classic short stroke Italian V12. It's an 82 millimeter bore, but just a 62 millimeter stroke. It's really best to think of it as like a V12 motorcycle engine. Ferrucci and Lamborghini believed that proper GT cars had a V12. Very high revving, 7,500 RPM is where peak power is made. It's a man's car, you gotta push those pedals. So not only does it make big power, but it also makes extremely smooth power, and it does so while sounding like God singing happy birthday. They really are great all-around usable cars. I mean, you could drive one every day. A friend of mine did for many years, drove one every day. Um, when everything works, the car is wonderful. It's easy to see out of, it's quick, easy to park. It's not wide by modern standards compared to SUVs and minivans. So it's really quite usable on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just that all of the maintenance and the repairs, they kind of never end. And so you're just constantly fixing stuff. That's really the great joy of owning an Espada is just to be able to go down the road at 100 miles an hour with so many moving parts and knowing that it's by your labor and your attention and your maintenance that you've kept all these moving parts working in harmony to be able to keep this car going. I mean, it's like owning a really, really complicated Swiss watch that you work on yourself. And um, that's really the pay the payoff for all the Michigas and trouble of, of owning one of these cars. Everyone should own a V12 once in their life. And if you don't believe me, well, just listen.